What's good? We live and direct. Great night, New York. WHCR 90.3 FM. Shout out to Paparazzi TV filming as well. And right now, we back in the Bronx with it. Big facts. You know, Big Bronx. Big BX. By the way to Gun Hill. Yes, sir. The, the valley. valley. <laughs> That's a fact. To do your homework on the valley. Right off the five train. Right off the five train. Shout out to the Bay too, you know what I mean? Shout out to the Bay also. Shout out to everybody, you know what I mean? Shout out to Co op City. Seymour, Co op. You wow. know? Shout out to everybody, everybody. man. Road. White Plains Road. White Plains Road, right? You know what I mean? Everybody. The whole that, uptown. The whole uptown, period. You know, a lot of people. Mount Vernon. <laughs> forget. Mount Vernon, yeah. A lot of people forget there's a lot of dope talent that comes from uptown, the uptown part of the Bronx. When they think of talented people, sometimes the North Bronx gets left out. That's a fact. So, yeah, we got a lot of talent up there. Like, a lot. Introduce a lot. yourself to the I mean, people. Slick Rick was from up top. You know what I'm saying? Definitely Slick Rick. But not, we got form- formally, man. Introduce yourself to the people, bro. And I was good, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Your boy Stray, the Saint. You know, a lot of people call me Saint Ray. We was getting into that. Earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know yeah. The vibes. We outside backpack rap culture. So yes, we sir. Tears. We here. Yes, sir, brother. I appreciate you. Um, Pulling up, man. I know it's last minute. You're a busy dude, man. You got a lot going on, man. Oh, good. We in the grind. Man, he came bearing gifts as well. <laughs> nah, we, we just grinding. So, so we appreciate, you know what I mean? And I see you grinding. I see you got a lot of different things going on, man. Um, First, we're going to go into the origin. Okay. Now, you know this is Hip Hop 50. Yes, sir. And by the way, I saw I seen you... Uh. Backstage at the in, at Yankee Stadium as well, man. You know, uh, doing wow. your thing. Shout out to Tuesday as well. Joint. Big shout out to Tuesdays, man. Wow. How, how how did you cultivate uh, that relationship with her? Um, I met I met Tuesday back in the day, like '06. We was grinding together. We um we were employed at the same establishment. At the time. Kind of cool, 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 cool. And she definitely, uh, we got to get her on the show too because she definitely came a long way. Nah, for sure. You for know sure. what I'm saying? She it's funny because back way. then I was doing music and she wasn't. And then I stopped doing music for like a good little minute. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, my time went by. And then I bucked, like, you know, bumped into her again. She was doing music, and then I wasn't. And then by the time, like, I, I picked up again. It, it finally came in. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of. Dope, dope. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, so. And my bad. Because not to say, like, I wasn't doing music. Because there was no point in time when I stopped Stop making, doing, doing the creative parts of music. That was always. Yeah, because I noticed in your, in, 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 in your discography. Oh, if you know iTunes, that it was like a gap between like twenty. You know, you, you, last two or three years you've been consistent, but before like twenty right. twenty, I know this was, a, it was it was a, it's yeah. pretty much nothing. I mean, even if I seen stuff like twenty fourteen, like I think. features or something on yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. else's joint. You know what I mean? But initially, like I was only putting um projects out through the mixtape scene. Co- copy. You know what I mean? I was taking that L on the intellectual property side to a degree just to get the get the get the brand out there. Yeah, you know get the bu- I mean? get the buzz right. going. All right, and um, when I slowed up, it was more so like getting the groundwork done, still recording, Copy. still still trying to get better at certain things, get my sound together, get my brain together. So it's dotting your and eyes and crossing your T's, pretty much, yeah, like that. See now, a lot of people. See now, see that that brings to my question of you know being prepared, right? Right. Now. Talk about the uh, the importance of preparation in this business. Um, you know, you stay ready, so you don't got to get ready. That's um, that's cliche. Everybody already say that. You already know. But I feel like preparation is is all it is anyway. You know what I mean? Like that's more so like the like the thing I harp on a lot. I literally just posted it like up to yesterday. Is that ten thousand hour rule, which is like speaks about being prepared to the fullest because that's when you're at like a master level of your mm-hmm. craft or whatever mm-hmm. you're approaching, right? They say 10,000 hours is that magic number. So I kind of I kind of live by that. I don't really look at it like preparation so much. Like I feel like when you when you about that life, it becomes a lifestyle, you know what I mean? So if you're going to put the time in to really hone it, then it's going to pay itself forward. I it definitely, definitely. And it's kind of like a, people don't understand. Like, you got a lot of younger artists, right, who think that uh, all they need is, like, one TikTok song. Right. And, you know, and that might work for the 2%. But the other 98% of artists, I don't care what genre of music you're in, you got to work. There's a grant, you know, you got to, you know, build the foundation. 
So you basically took the last few years to go ahead and make sure your foundation solid. was solid. Right. And it's dope because you could kind of you could see the difference. I mean, I think it. I think it's all contingent on what you're trying to do as an artist, though, too. You know um, what I mean? Um, it gets to the point where, like, if you just or when you're ready to break a record, or you're going in a direction where you know you have something, right? Like whether it's a hit or a body of work or a whole approach to a brand or a branding effort, you really only need that one that one real look you know what i'm saying That's a if fact. you can market it correctly it's going to give you enough traction to where you could start to facilitate and build a, a, a career around off of that one yeah so i, I feel like you still got to have your bricks in place you know what i'm saying to build the empire but like one one record could be that first solid piece of foundation that you're gonna put all them other bricks on too so i don't knock that if, that's a if, that's a hundred percent right you know what i mean if you're approaching it with some diligence but i mean I agree with everything you're saying, but let me give a slight rebuttal. And you know this, you know, you know, because you've been doing this for a little bit. You might have to go through fifty, a hundred, even higher many records to get that one record. You understand that, right? A lot of them <laughs> don't understand that. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, like you, like I could tell, like when I hear you, like hear your music, that uh, some people do music just to be doing it. Because they look at it as a hustle and there's nothing wrong with that. But you can also feel, hear it when people, of course, the goal is to generate funds and make it revenue. But you can hear when somebody has a passion for it as well. Right. And I can hear that, you know, you actually you absolutely have a passion for a culture. You're not just doing it to that. do it. You know I appreciate saying? that. Um, yeah, sincerely, um, I, I love music. You know what I mean? I, I can't really say that no other way. Like, my whole life has really been a thing. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. Before it was rap, it was definitely reggae. I come from yard, of course. you know what I mean. So that was a that was a big deal for me. Like Buju Bantan, Bounty Killer, mm -hmm. Ferris Hammond, you name it. You know what I mean. Barrington Levy. Like I yeah. literally grew up on these records, harming like harping on every word. You know what I mean. Like I'm Damn. harmonizing like 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 Bounty Killer with the with the deep vocals when mm -hmm. I'm four or five years old. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like type thing. So like those kind of things molded me. Um, and when I when I came here, like the sound wasn't the same, mm -hmm. but music and energy, I always say something that's it's you can't hide it. It's undeniable. Yeah, you know what I mean? But if it's great, you gon' like you put on a a song and it's a there's a baby in the room. The baby gonna let you know if that song that's is fire so or not. You know what I mean? Like so vibration is everything. Yeah, like I like automatically I started like Biggie and like cause I got here in '96. You know what I'm saying? So like, hot, big. Dr. Dre, like Michael Jackson was already, like even in Jamaica, I was already on that. Yeah, of course, Mike, like, Mike is Mike. Yeah, <laughs> when, I, when I got here, like it was it was different because back home, I'm not even gonna lie, I didn't see music videos. Mm -hmm. That was what like, kind of like, like the when I got to see like, vi like videos changed my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Like this look, cause you know what I mean? A whole new sick. world. Yeah, it's a whole new world. We, we just wasn't seeing all of the all of that like production mm -hmm. like in our videos back home so that kind of like just brought me into the fold of hip hop crazy now talk about how um like I was saying touching on the 50 year anniversary and you know cool herc okay of course you know he comes from a, a from island back on Jamaica yeah, yeah okay, he's from, from Bronx, he has a, he's a yard, too, yeah, he's, yeah you know what I'm saying so uh talk about the uh the similarity between reggae and hip hop, because basically, if you know, they're like it's brother, it's like brothers, <laughs> right? I mean, I think it's same, same house to me. It's like this, you know, same household, right? Um, I look at it like as far as culturally, it's the same thing. Yes, right? that's I mean, what I'm saying. Culturally, it's definitely the same thing. Like, um, there's people that's on the side of like, like I think, I think her name is Queen Af Africa, Queen, right? Queen Africa. She's like she's on more the side like like she want to hear more Damian Marley, right? She want to hear more. Buju, she want to hear mm -hmm. more because like that's what you would compare to, like I guess the the most deafs and the qualities mm -hmm. and the black thoughts. You know what I mean? Right. And she's like bona fide on, on certain people, like you know what I mean? Because what they talking about is like it's the same shit, like that that like the you know the same tropes and knocks that Lauren uh, speak on. Like she's like, yo, we don't need that as much as we need to just like uplift ourselves. High vibrations. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, there's definitely that part of it also that 
you know, it's a crazy similarity. But then there's also like, you know, it's people making a way for themselves. It's, yeah. the, it's the the triumphant, like resonating spirit that you just see and understand like through music and culture. Like like that is very like similar That's also, you know what I mean? So I feel like it's undeniable. Like again, look, That's it, dope. It, it, it speaks to not only music, but energy. Energy you know or I mean? and honestly, at the end of the day, uh, that's all. I don't care what genre of music you into. That's all it is. It's vibrations and right. energy. Right. right now, for sure, for sure. You know, like a uh, you hear uh, you know you 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 know what I mean? you hear Bob Marley song, and you know you just you know you you, you know you, you just you, you feel good. You you know the vibrations is high. You know what I mean? The, your, your your thought patterns are in the good, uh, in a positive mode or whatever. Uh, you feel wonderful. You know what I mean? You might hear a Keith Sweat song, and you know you want to make love to your girl. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, all music is a vibration. That's why it's kind of like you know. But that I, I'm not gonna lie. Even though all music is vibrational, I think that's why reggae and hip hop share a little nuance and a little special place in culture. You know what I mean? Because now, whether whether it's reggae tone and it's influenced by hip hop or not, or it's you know what I mean, like another culture specifically outside of like Black or Caribbean, mm-hmm. or and like you still gonna go back now to where like if they nice, they utilizing metaphors to mm-hmm. to really like right to be depictive about like their life and how it's set up. So no matter what, it's gonna like force the person listening. To have a bit more expansive of a point of view, you know what I mean, or like a, a deeper depth of understanding, you know what I'm saying. And I feel That's like, it. I feel like the best reggae songs, the best hip hop music, helps people extrapolate the best out of themselves. Self. You know what I'm saying. Whether I it's agree. A, whether it's energetically, whether it's a mental, you know what I mean, level or oh, whatever. I, I feel is. like the best, or even like an emotional and spiritual level. I feel like the best mm-hmm. in both cultures really. Touch you on three levels, pause, super pause, three times. <laughs> <laughs> you now tune in to WHC on High Point Three FM. Uh, nah, yo, bro, that's uh, yeah, I couldn't say it better myself. I couldn't say it better myself. Now, I uh, every artist has that one song, right, that they listen to, and they, you know, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start writing. Like I like with me, I like like I heard the uh I heard uh what was that song on Biggie Somebody Gotta Die. If I go, you gotta go. And when I I remember when I first heard that song, that's what made me want to start writing. Cause it was something about that uh song that just uh it struck a chord with me where it was like, Nah, I gotta do this. I gotta do it. So for you, like was was it that a particular song or just? I w- I would be lying to say I remember, bro. Copy, copy. I would be lying to say, like the the way I tell it now is that I feel like my life was already like like or a law was already writing this narrative for my life that mm-hmm. I didn't see. Fact. You know what I mean? And when it started to manifest, like I had to just awake into what was happening. Happening. You know what I, I mean? Respect like that. type shit. So like. When I was coming up, when I was back home, my mom's was a playwright. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like her pen all day, all day. And then this is yard, so you know, like school and scholastics is like a big deal. Yeah, it's a yeah. whole other thing. <laughs> so she kept my head in a book, but on some like creative escape type shit. Like I don't know why I used to do it either. Like I remember, like my uncle finally shit told me I was lying. And he peeped game because he literally found the newspaper. But I used to take the newspapers and mm. I used to like trace over the comics because I couldn't draw like really well or whatever. And then I would just write in my own narratives. Mm. Almost like what my mom's was doing with the playwright shit, Can't but the, the cartoon shit. And even how I'm comparing it to what my mom's was doing, when I was young, I couldn't see that. When I was 21, I couldn't see that. Mm-hmm. Even when I was 30, I still wasn't comparing it to what my mom's was doing. I didn't see it. So now. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, until like later, I was like, yo, shit. Like, yo, mm-hmm. her influence on me was wild. Wow. Like, well, like, way deeper than I even really did. Really? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Type joint. And, it was um, embedded in you the whole time. Yeah, like OD. So even when I when I got here, like I was doing little shit, like I was still doing like the bounty and and, and the the buju shit, where it's like, mm-hmm. like it wasn't 
their lyrics. Mm-hmm. You heard it? Well, I wasn't doing no Buju lyrics type shit. Mm-hmm. It was my lyrics. Toppy. Right? But it was Buju's tone, tone. type shit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? On some shit. So when I got here, like, like I was already making, so I was rapping on my mom's answering machine. Mm-hmm. I was doing certain shit, like, but I never, I couldn't tell you what song it was that even started pushing me down that lane. Mm-hmm. I was kind of in a creative path already. Didn't even really notice, and it was destined like it, 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 it was destined, like you said. Why, like type? You shit. know, what I'm saying it was embedded in you, it was embedded in you, and it's gonna come out a different way. So it just, right. you know, what I mean, it just came out. Um, pause. <laughs> pause. Yeah, definitely double pause. Yeah. So, got me back on my <laughs> double <bullshit>. my BS <laughs> pardon me sorry about that it's, you know what I mean yeah, oh yeah we oh yeah we gonna definitely have to edit this but uh is you know what I mean I, nah man I appreciate you even just being yourself and just you know what I mean letting us into your world man nah, no doubt. now let's no. fast forward a little bit it's 2023 now okay a, a lot going on well post COVID era post COVID world different hip hop fifty yes sir. It seems like there's a tide that's turning within the music industry right now. So what's on tap for the rest of the year? Oh, uh, for me personally? Yeah, for 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 you personally. I I mean I'm in grind mode. I've been in grind mode since the year started. Um I know you got a video that's about to drop soon, right? Yeah, like I looked at fourth quarter. Multiple like videos. That. I got four videos that I'm dropping in fourth quarter. All right. Um I have a mixtape that I put out like top of the year on Bandcamp that I'm still pushing. Smart but man. I'm gonna start to roll out the singles, more the singles again released onto the internet, onto streaming. Just yeah. to, you know what I mean? Uh, to make sure that people know I have like this catalog. I probably start putting out like two songs a month for the rest of the fourth quarter. Smart. Just so it'll be like a little EP worth of presence there. Still pushing a Bandcamp releases, like dropping another mixtape on that, Bandcamp. That's, that's where you're going to get your money. Yeah, dropping you another mixtape in, um, in the fourth quarter. And by Black Friday, the the, the website, and the website is out now, subliminaltears.store. And that's tears is in T-I-E-R-S because it's levels to this, you heard. Subliminaltears.store. And we have a transition. Let's get into the merchandise. Black Friday is going crazy. Let's get into the merchandise. I'm glad we transition to that. Yes, I saw you know what I mean I, I you know I, I saw a lot of dope merchandise on Instagram and on the visual yeah, that right, you right. showed me man so just uh um Subliminal Tears is the name of the brand copy uh Subliminal Tears New York is a focal point um of what I was doing um the way I'm rocking with the merch right now is, is similar to the Nipsey mold but I took the the advice Fifth gave Nip also and threw it in a pot. And then took some of what Jay did also and threw it in the pot and made my own little mold. Dope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dope. So what it is is that like the mixtape is a hundred and ten dollars, y'all. I sell my mixtape for a hundred and ten dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm about to raise the price just because mm-hmm. I like the number one eleven. And how I'm doing it is every time I raise the price too, they get more with it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it started out as a hundred cash. At a hundred cash, you would get the hat. You get a T-shirt. Uh, you get the mixtape. You get the whole okay, and you yeah. Get tote bag. So you getting a hundred ten dollars so, worth of stuff. So now, regardless, no. Well, even at a hundred, when because you, I didn't have shorts at first. So you would also get a pin. Um, this little pin that came with the joint also. So now bringing the pins back, you still get to pick a T-shirt. You still get a hat. You get the shorts and you get the mixtape. That's that's you about right. I mean? So yeah. it's like, and then the thing on my side where why I said like the mixtape is on Bandcamp, mm-hmm. right? So you get access to the music. My publishing still tracks every single song being sold as a sale. Um, you know, that way, by the time, and my goal is 2,500 sales. Mm-hmm. That's not too crazy, not too high, but by the time I get to 2,500 sales, actual sales, and I go push those singles on it to Spotify, mm-hmm. to iTunes, each single already had 2,500 sales. Uh, easy, yeah. And when that translates into streaming and it hits the, the circuits for them first weeks or whatever, you know what I mean? It helps you get a little bit more visibility because 2,500 sales is like, you know what I mean? It's hundred, that's, that's a couple hundred thousand streams that they're going to say your song had first week. So just, just the kind of placements right, and the kind of like, down. yeah, the kind of the kind of looks you could get, you know what I mean? It, it should should be able to help me have a little bit of leverage. Man, I, bro, I appreciate you and breaking that down for. just now, man. And I could tell that uh, cause a lot of people don't think that innovative nowadays. So the fact that you I, ask, you, I think just getting some of the info help. Yeah, you know definitely. I mean? The more info you get, the, the people like the Nips of the world and Jays of the world, man. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And 50. Don't forget 50. 50 too. Yeah, definitely 50 as well, man. You know, so definitely got to 
support. Ryan Leslie. And it's hundred ten dollars worth the stuff anyway. Young boy La Russell, like there's a lot of people outside. La Russell, well, shout out to La Russell, definitely. He's wow. doing his thing wow. right wow. now, wow. man. Game out there. Wow. You know, and, and, and it's a beautiful thing because now you know we could be young black entrepreneurs right. and uh, not sacrifice our integrity. Right. And the process and, you know, get clean legal money right. and be able to uh, follow our dreams or what have you and uh, support our families the right way, you know what I'm saying, which is the most important way, especially for people of color, you know. So, bro, I, I definitely appreciate that game you just dropped. That's a jewel. Nah, we no probably going to take that snippet. In, I ain't going to lie. We're going to take that snippet. In, yeah, nah, no yeah, that's a fact. We're going to throw that on on, on, on Instagram in a couple okay. of days. That's okay. what we <laughs> So people, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that's a that's a clip for real, for real. Instagram, you too short. Here we come. But uh, nah, man. So yeah, I heard him, man. You know what I mean? I gotta I, go I ahead. I don't know how many couple of days we got too, but we in the Marquette Hotel in BK on the 29th. There we go. Let's chop this up and get this on the YouTube short too, on the Instagram short too. Tell Fast. the world they gotta come outside. We about to turn this upside down. It's gonna be one of the illest underground shows. In hip hop this year to set off the fourth quarter, guaranteed. Man, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop out on the 29th, man. Brooklyn, yeah, I know what it is. Brooklyn's popping right now. I mean, name a time in history that Brooklyn wasn't popping. That's a fact. And I'm big BX, but I, you know, I mean, ain't no hate in my blood. Like I I was going back and forth with somebody the other day, and I was telling how, like, right now, as far as like you know, music wise or whatever, Mm -hmm. Brooklyn's more popping than Manhattan right now. Oh, you crazy? I'm like, nah, bro. Brooklyn, as far as like this. On the, you know, independent shows. Maybe and, I'm bugging, but name a time that Brooklyn wasn't more popping. Oh, you mean like the venue spaces? I'm talking about venues okay. and all that. Okay. That's what okay. I'm saying. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about, the venue spaces. All right, I got it. Because right now, okay. it, most, 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 of, most, of, uh, most of the action is in Brooklyn. Is in Brooklyn yeah, right yeah, now. No no Especially lie. since COVID, you know what I mean? Right. All the action is in Brooklyn right now. Nobody, you know. People feel more comfortable going to Brooklyn than Manhattan, which I never thought in a million years that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I, well, you know, I come from well, we both are probably around the same age. We come from that everywhere, you know. You know, 20 years ago when you go to Brooklyn, you had to have heart and be thorough. You know what I'm saying? Now it's kind of like everybody and their mama going. To, it's still some, it's still some guys out there, you know, that's doing their thing. But you know, what I'm trying be to say. A little crazy walking through Harlem in the Bronx. That's a, right now, yeah, Mount, that's a fact. Mount Vernon and Y.O. like off the hook right now. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, it's dope the fact that uh, you keeping up with the innovation and and you taking the advice and turning it into your own thing. Because that's all advice is anyway. You taking yeah. advice, for, good positive advice for somebody, and you know, you, just trying to study the game, study the game, game and creating like your own lane. I was already kind of late on everything. You know what I mean? Like I was late on the culture. I was late kept watching the videos. I'm late on the information. So it's like I was already doing my homework, you know what I mean? So the Thanks. information was kind of just right like. Right there. Yeah. Right. I, I got to disagree with you before we go. I don't, me personally, I don't think you was like, because everything happens for a reason. Everything well, that's true. No lie. No lie. You right on time. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. I take that one. I you know what I'm saying? You right on time, man. So on that note, brother, man, we appreciate you pulling up, man. I appreciate the interview. We you appreciate you well, driving these jewels, man, for one more time before culture. we go. You know what I'm saying? You Google know, what I mean? that. you know, Google, Google that. Also, got you know, going to the Black Friday sale again. Also, all right, so, uh, so September 29th. That store, we're going live before Black Friday. The website will be live. But the sale on Black Friday will be worth your time. Mm-hmm. I'm telling y'all that now. Subliminal Tears that store. Go check us out. We already live right now. You heard? Yeah, I uh, know what it is, man. Late night, New Friday York. Friday the 29th. We outside the. Littest underground hip hop show, Pull up. the New York Report, in a Marquette Hotel. I can't tell you enough about it. You know what I'm saying? And we here, backpack rap culture on the road. Yeah, I know what it is, man. Shout out to Hot. Shout out to ninety point three FM. We out. Shout out to Paparazzi TV. Paparazzi TV. Word. Big up, yo. Not love. Not love. Yeah, I know what it is, man. Ninety point three FM, late night New York. We out.